What's going on everybody? It's Andy the Mad Tatter and here's me face. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I have been challenged by Carboot Chris, or rather tagged by Carboot Chris, uh, to answer the internet's uh, most probing, most probingest 19 questions <laughs> um, about just generally us. Uh, I think it's just kind of something that's been floating around on Facebook. It's found its way into the reselling community, so there's quite a lot of resellers and stuff that are doing this now. Uh, so yeah, it's my turn, essentially. Uh, I will try and tag four people as well, as the brief goes, uh, but I'm not really engaged with social media, uh, and certainly none of the reselling groups or anything like that. Uh, so it's a case of, I'll have to just sort of tag people and hope, basically. Or you could, you know, if you want to do it, and then say I tagged you in it, that's fine, you can do that too. But... Brew on, and we'll get started with the questions. Question one, what does your channel name mean? Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, I think, for if you're somebody from the UK. Uh, we generally refer to second-hand merchandise and second-hand goods and stuff like that as tat informally. Um, so therefore a tatter being somebody who deals in tat and a mad tatter being somebody who's mad and deals in tat. Uh, also, obviously, it's a nice sort of... Um, call back to the Mad Hatter as well, so it sort of, you know, it has that familiarity. Uh, and it was one of those names that just kind of came to me in a flash of, I was trying to think of what to name the business, and it was one of those names that just sort of came to me in a flash, and I thought, oh yeah, that's a great name, I'll use that. And uh, yeah, subsequently found out nobody else was using it as well, which was great, and then obviously somebody else did start using it, but now I've trademarked the name, so it's my name now. <laughs> uh, where was I born? Question two, I was born in Stockport as was Carboot Chris, um, in Stepping Hill Hospital, South Manchester, Cheshire, border. Uh, yeah, it's one of those places, Stockport is generally one of those places that you find a lot of people who've lived here since their childhood. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't really know all of the socioeconomic factors that may make that happen, uh, but certainly... From my perspective, I've never really needed to move because everything I need is kind of in the area. You know, we're not far from Manchester Airport. We're not far from major transport links for motorways, railways, shopping. Everything, Everything's kind of here, so you sort of don't need to move. And I think that's the case with a lot of people. You know, you tend to find a lot of people in this area um, are, you know, second, third, fourth generation people that have lived in the area forever. Uh, that leads us on to question three quite nicely. Where are you now? I am still very much in Stockport, Cheshire, Greater Manchester, border area uh, in my living room I sat on my sofa in front of my curtains which is what you can see behind me with a dog next to me who may or may not come on camera if she can be bothered doesn't look like she can be bothered though question four now I've got coffee off my lip question four what would your parents have named you if you were the opposite sex I actually know this uh, they'd have named me Melanie after Melanie Safka uh, 60s, 70s kind of singer, songwriter, uh, wrote the I've Got a Brand New Pair of Roller Skates song and stuff like that. Yeah, I would have been named after Melanie Safka, essentially. Um, the story of my actual name is far less interesting and romantic. Um, I was named Andy um, because my parents couldn't decide on a on a boy's name and then my one of their friends at the time who was the best man at the wedding as well uh also called him and he said well why don't you just name it after me and they did so uh yeah so that's that's where my name came from it might as well have been drawn out of a hat essentially uh right next one what is your eye color my eye color is a sort of browny green um but i think more interestingly about my eyes is that i've got one looking at you and one looking for you um i've had a squint like this since birth if i swap eyes so if I swap the dominance of my eyes, you can kind of see it going the other way as well. So that one's, it's worse that way. If I switch dominance back to that eye, ah, yeah, this is really weird to try and do on a camera. If I switch dominance back to that eye, it kind of wanders a bit as well. Um, yeah, so I had a reasonably significant number of operations before the age of about five on my eyes to try and straighten them up. Uh, because when I was a baby, if you look at any of my baby pictures, they are literally sort of both, both off in one direction. I look like I'm doing the the longest side eye ever um but in actual fact yeah uh, i've just lived with that all my life so um it doesn't bother me it doesn't affect my vision nothing like that it's just one of those things where sometimes if i'm talking to people that have never met me before they always do that me kind of you know I, i'm one of those people with a squint that always looks like they're looking past you and i'm not 
after 35 years, I have managed with most people to kind of be able to sort of position my head in such a way that it, it's not apparent and you can't really tell. Um, but also doing that on camera is actually quite difficult because I've never seen myself actively trying to do that before. Very strange. Uh, next question. What is your favourite candle scent? Do, honestly, and you know, I don't mind how you want to stereotype me here, but do I look like somebody who has scented candles around my house? No. Um, yeah, no, it's not something that factors into my life whatsoever, scented candles, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, I do, like most people, have my favourite scents, so we'll just go into sort of favourite smells in general, if you like. I like um, grinding metal, welding, they're quite nice smells. Um, Gunpowder, really nice smell. Uh, Acetone type smells I quite like as well, so, you know, kind of spray paint, MEK, things like that. Uh, food wise, I like the smells of sort of curries, uh, kebabs, things like that. So just kind of, I, you know, they don't really make candles, I don't think, in the sort of smells that I like. If you want something conventional, I guess coffee, I quite like the smell of. Yeah, coffee's a reasonably um, conventional thing that I like the smell of. But beyond that, it's not something I really think about too much. I've not got a particularly good sense of smell. Um, from spending a lot of time in my youth working in the jewellery trade, it's ultimately knackered my nose through dust and, and fumes and stuff like that because I was stupid and never wore all of the personal protective equipment that I was supposed to have worn at the time, uh, being a stupid youth thinking I knew better. So um, my sense of smell is not as sharp as it should be. So I think that's why the smells that I like are quite strong smells and quite sort of acrid smells to a certain extent because it's about all I can smell. Uh, next one, number seven, can you cook? Yes, I can, would you believe? Uh... I can cook, and it's also something that I really like doing as well. I am, however, a massive ingredient snob. Um, growing up and stuff like that, my mum, uh, and, and really probably most of my family members, even my extended family and stuff, um, they've got this ability to be able to kind of pull a meal out of nowhere. Uh, you know, I, I could go and look at the same set of ingredients and the same, you know, cupboards and shelves and stuff in a kitchen and not see anything worth cooking, uh, but... My parents, my mum particularly, she's got this ability to just kind of go, oh yeah, I can mix that with that, with that, with that, with that, and make a meal out of it. Uh, I don't have that, but if you, if I have got a set of ingredients in front of me that I can see a meal in, I can smash something out. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty reasonably good at cooking, I'm not going to lie. Uh, next, what is your sign? Uh, skid risk, 200 yards. Oh, star sign, right. Uh, star sign Taurus doesn't really sort of factor into my life particularly too much. I don't, uh, I don't really consider that there's too many similarities that can be brought about by people who are born under a certain sign or anything like that. However, that being said, I do believe in uh, the celestial movement of planets having an effect on the human body. Uh, simply because the Earth is, what, 70% water, 80% water? And the movement of celestial bodies, i.e. the moon and stuff like that, is what controls the tides. This probably isn't the case if you're a flat earther, but if you're a flat earther, don't watch my videos, please. Um, yeah, so the movement of the celestial bodies and stuff affects the tides on Earth, and we're about the same sort of percentage water as the planet is in our bodies. So the movement of celestial bodies probably has some sort of bearing on us, but you're not going to be able to tell your future from it. You're not going to be able to tell what type of person you are from it. I think it's just one of those things that we can't quantify because we can't study it. Yeah, so that's that one. Uh, next, what scares you about getting old? Absolutely nothing. Uh, I don't fear anything. I don't fear death. I know that's really morbid. It's not meant to be a morbid thing or anything like that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these gunko people that'll just go out and put themselves at risk for no reason. Um, but I, I have a very sort of rational and factualized view of my own existence. Um, so nothing scares me about getting old. It's inevitable. Um, ultimately, one day, as we all will, I will die. And when I do die, I'll be dead. So it won't be a factor that I will be able to think about because I'll be dead so the only thing that I think most people get scared of with age is the the sort of inevitability of it all and even that doesn't really phase me to be honest with you um yeah just don't really fear anything I guess in that sense 
Next question. Sorry, I'm drinking a lot of this brew because I was quite conscious of the fact that when it got to um, the video that I put up yesterday, the sales roundup video, I was quite conscious of the fact that I was going quite a lot towards the end because I had a really dry mouth. Um, so I'm just making sure I stay hydrated with a good old uh, mug of coffee. Uh, next one. What's the last thing you bought? I can't actually remember. Um, the last thing that I bought from a reselling perspective, actually, hold on, get it. Hello. Uh, yeah, last thing I bought from a reselling perspective is this pair of uh, Tommy Hill figure. Uh, what are these? Rogar. Uh, jeans basically they're all brand new with tags I paid 15 quid for them which is probably a bit on the high side but they are brand new with tags he'll figure denim all genuine very nice indeed uh, I should be able to sell those for about 60 to 65 quid so that's why I was not too bothered about spending 15 quid on them that was the last thing I bought from a reselling perspective and um, the last thing I bought for myself I can't really remember um, pretty much for the last 12 months since I've been full-time doing this as a, as a job I don't really think I've spent anything on myself, to be quite honest. I think everything that I would have ordinarily spent on myself has gone straight back into stock. So, um, yeah, I've not really bought anything for ages and certainly can't remember what it was the last thing that I bought. Next, what is your favourite holiday? Uh, so, as Chris said on his video, um, this could kind of mean different things depending on where you're from. Uh, the holidays in the US and stuff like that, obviously they refer to the holidays as being... Uh, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, you know, the actual sort of public holidays. When we say holiday in the UK, we tend to refer more to actually going away on vacation, as it were. So um, I'll answer it from both perspectives, I guess. My favourite public holiday? Um, probably Christmas, in all fairness. Not because I have any kind of sentimentality or fondness towards it, um, but I'm one of those people, I quite like the cold, so it happens at the right time of the year. Uh, and I think it's the time of the year where most people get the most time off, generally speaking. Um, so from the perspective of being able to see family and friends and stuff like that, it makes it a lot easier uh, over the Christmas period to do that. Plus, like I say, I, I, I'm a person who likes the colder weather, so I quite like being being able to go out in the colder weather and there'd be nobody else around and stuff like that. It's quite cool. Uh, in terms of holidays going away, vacations... Uh, the favourite one probably that I've been on, uh, Malta, I went there a good number of times uh, since I met Joe to be honest with you, we, we used to go there quite often, uh, absolutely love Malta, it's got so many different cultural influences in one small place, um, but I find one of the best things about it from my perspective certainly is that it's not like a party island, like sort of your Balearics and stuff like that, so you don't tend to get the big stag do's, hen do's, stuff like that. It's a, it's a little bit more... Malta is a little bit more civilised. Well, it's a lot more civilised, to be fair, than sort of the Balearics and places like that and the... Uh, what are the other ones? The Canaries and stuff. Um, in terms of where I would like to go, there are several places that I would really like to go and see. Um, I'd love to see Iceland. I'd love to see Japan. Um, and certain bits of North America as well, to be fair. Uh, I, I'm just, I just kind of want to see as much as I can, but at the same time, I kind of want to keep spending money in my business, so the possibilities of going on holiday become a lot less possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's that one. Uh, next question, what is your guilty pleasure? This is a funny, funny question, because I don't believe any pleasure for anybody should be guilty if it's not harming other people, you know? If, if you're doing something and you enjoy it and it's not inconveniencing, harming, or in any sort of detriment to anybody else, then why should it be a guilty pleasure? Uh, but, in the spirit of answering the question, uh, I would probably say, because uh, obviously people talk about this and, and it tends to refer to music and stuff like that a lot, so I'd probably say my guilty pleasure at the moment certainly is beatbox. Um, if you're looking, my subscriptions, which are kind of public on YouTube, you can see all the channels that I follow. And in amongst the plethora of reselling channels and car channels and watch channels and stuff like that, um, you'll find a lot of beatboxes in there. And uh, it's something that I clicked onto a couple of years ago now. 
And it just blew me away uh, as somebody that spent a lot of time in a band and has sort of had a has been reasonably influenced by music for a lot of my life. Um, I, I was only ever aware of beatbox of being like the sort of boots and cats and boots and cats thing that, you know, everybody kind of talks about when you think of beatbox. Um, but when you actually go into and start watching the professional, uh, the, the professionals doing this and the people that are doing this on a competitive basis, the music that they can produce just out of their mouth and the, the the multitude of sounds that they can produce and quite often make multiple sounds at once um, is absolutely astonishing. And it's something that, you know, I have a little bit of a dabble in myself and a little bit of a go at on the quiet, but I'm certainly not going to be doing that on a video anytime soon. Um, but yeah, that's probably my guilty pleasure. I absolutely love beatbox. I, you know, there's there's some really really talented people out there doing that. And if I could do it, I don't think I would. Li I don't think any other sound would ever leave my mouth. I think I would be constantly just walking around beatboxing, making some of the sounds, and and you know, putting putting tracks together in that sense. Uh, what show do you binge watch? Crime shows mainly. So um, at the moment. Uh, I'm watching my way through uh, with Joe. We're watching our way through NCIS Los Angeles uh, because there's just been a new series of that come out. So we kind of started watching from the beginning on that one again to, to kind of get all the way through to the new series. Uh, but all of the kind of NCIS, CSI, uh, Criminal Minds is probably a favourite uh, just because it's that little bit darker and that little bit more sinister. Um, but yeah, those sort of things. I've, I'll, be, I'll, I'll throw it out there now. I've never seen an episode of Breaking Bad. Uh, I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I've never seen... Uh, what else is a big popular one? See, I don't really even know what's popular these days, to be honest with you. But I've never seen Breaking Bad, never seen Game of Thrones. These things just don't appeal to me. Um, yeah. So that's it. Crime shows, basically, are the things that I tend to binge watch. Back in the day, when I was younger, I would have binge watched Star Trek. Um, just because I grew up as a, as a mad, obsessive Star Trek fan. Still quite like a bit of it now, on the quiet, to be fair. I suppose that could have gone on the guilty pleasures, really. Um, but yeah, anything up to sort of Deep Space Nine on Star Trek is fine and dandy by me. Uh, where have I gone? Binge watch, read that one. What item do you never leave the house without? Um, probably my hat, I suppose, to be fair, is is the uh, is going to be the one that's the less conventional sort of keys, wallet, phone, etc. Uh, kind of thing. I tend to wear my hat a lot. Now, I'm very, very blonde, um, and I keep my hair quite short. So what happens is if I take my hat off, and you can see over the light there as well, I immediately look bald. Uh, and it's not something that I have any kind of amazing sense of um, sort of... What's the word? It's not something that kind of really bothers me too much, looking bald. You know, it's it's not like I'm ashamed of it or anything like that. Um, but... I think because I'm sort of six foot five as well and, you know, getting on for 18 stone, um, if I'm walking around looking bald, I kind of just look like a skinhead thug. Uh, and it's not a look that I kind of really want to go for. So the hat, apart from just being kind of a good little way to stay relatively incognito, um, does also serve that purpose of kind of softening my image a little bit and making me look a bit less, you know, because if I stand there and do that now, Especially with that lighting. My God, how frightening do I look? Um, yeah. Anyway, moving swiftly on. What's the next one? Are you an evening person or a morning person? Evening person without question. Not been a morning person. I was born in 1984. I don't think I've been a morning person since about 1986. So, uh, yeah, definitely an evening person without question. Next one uh, is... What is your favourite movie genre? Ooh... See, anytime you try and anytime somebody asks me a question where I have to pigeonhole myself into a particular genre, I really struggle. Uh, it's the same with music because I like so much different music. I also like so many different types of film, and it very much depends on my kind of mood and stuff like that. Uh, but I will say, by and large, uh, if if you wanted me to sort of say to, to sort of stand in that box, I would probably say um, kind of Japanese sort of psychological action type films if that makes if if that sort of specifies the genre if um if you know the sort of thing that I'm referring to uh it's things like 
uh, Old Boy. That's a great film, the original sort of uh, Korean production of Old Boy. Uh, the Takashi Miike films, uh, Itchy the Killer, there's uh, Audition, things like that. They're kind of a bit in the psychological horror vein as well. Um, but the, the, I don't know, I just like the way Japanese, Chinese, generally a lot of Asian countries uh, and their filmmakers, I like the way they tell a story uh, because they just sort of, they flesh things out so well and they, they can make a really believable universe in a very short space of time. Uh, and in actual fact, one of the questions that was cut off this list I've subsequently found out is what's your favourite book? And my favourite book uh, is also by a Japanese author called Natsuo Karino, uh, and the book's called Out, and that is very similarly um, sort of written in a, it, 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 in a way where you kind of get to know the characters and what makes them tick and makes... It, you get to know them in such detail that when when the character's put into a situation within the story, you almost kind of know how that character's going to react straight away because they've been so well fleshed out and so well written to begin with. So for me, with anything like that, I think it's very much about believability and credibility. Um, suspension of disbelief is something that I kind of save for computer games more than films and stuff like that. If I'm watching films, reading books, watching TV, I kind of crave a certain... Um, realness to it, I guess. Uh, what's good in your life right now? <laughs> to be honest with you, I've got really nothing to complain about at all. Um, my wife's fantastic. My job's fantastic. I can't... Uh, that's pretty much all I've got, in fairness. My wife, my job, my family. Everything's great. There's nothing that really stands out above anything else as being particularly amazing um and that's not perhaps meant in as negative a way as it may have come across um but i'm just ultimately reasonably happy with everything so yeah everything's good can't complain uh next question are you an introvert or an extrovert depends on the situation uh, and depends on the people that i'm around um i've been in sales based jobs all my life, retail and things like that, and, and being in front of people. Um, I've also, as I've said in, in a previous video, I was lead singer in a rock band for six years. Um, so behaving appropriately to the situation is kind of what I've always done, as opposed to having one overriding characteristic or another. I guess I'm sort of a social chameleon to a certain extent. Um, Probably, I, I guess, I'm more of an extrovert because I'm quite happy to just go up and talk to a complete stranger or I'm quite happy to just, you know, sit here and talk to a camera to a load of complete strangers answering arbitrary questions. Um, so I guess probably more of an extrovert on paper, but I can, you know, reel it in and just sort of sit back and shut up if I have to as well and, and be as introverted as the situation calls for. Uh, next question. In fact, last question. What is your biggest accomplishment? Um, the business is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I I'm pretty proud of what I've accomplished and how I've accomplished it with the reselling business. Um, especially the circumstances of coming into doing it and the, the, this, the whole thing of having to, um, adapt very, very quickly to doing this full time. Uh, it, long story short, and I will go into this more in another video, I'll do a proper introduction video to the channel where, you know, I'll go into my background and how I got into doing this a, a little bit more and stuff. But, um, yeah, the, the, the whole thing with, um, the business, yeah, I, I got into it because I had illnesses in the family at the time. Um, and the full-time job that I was working uh, they basically, I said, you know, my wife's been particularly ill, which she had been, she's fine these days, don't get me wrong, but at the time she was quite ill. Um, my mum was also quite ill and my mum had stopped driving and stuff at that point as well, cause she was reasonably ill. Um, again, they're both okay now, you know, they're, they're both managing conditions and whatnot. Um, but at the time it was going through that whole thing of being diagnosed with bits and pieces and having to go back into back into for tests and, and uh, scans and stuff like that so because my mum wasn't driving and because Joe doesn't drive it was a case of right I'm gonna have to give lifts around as and when people need hospital appointments doctor's appointments or whatever so I just said to my employer at the time I said look there's a possibility 
that, uh, you know, I might have to run either my wife or my mum to some appointments here, there and everywhere. Now, the employer that I was working for at the time had himself uh, just had prior to this had quite a, a, a nasty medical scare himself uh, where he had to sort of go and have a lot of scans and tests and whatnot himself. Um, so I ex I reasonably expected this to be understood uh, when I said, you know, it's a possibility that I'm going to have to have a little bit of time here and there just to run people to appointments. The answer that I got is, is an expression that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, I was told categorically in these exact words, don't make your problems company problems. Uh, so from that point, my brain went, okay, I'm not going to make company problems my problems either. Uh, and I completely mentally checked out of that business and left uh, as well. So it's a great business. It's a real shame. It's a fantastic business. It's still going and I wish them every success. I'm not going to name the business, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic business. I wish them every success. They're a great business. But that one expression, don't make your problems company problems, when I'm basically having exactly the same problem that you yourself have just had, nah. So um, from that point on, this was in sort of September 2018. Uh, from that point on, I launched into doing this full time just straight off the bat. And um, yeah, that's something I'm pretty proud of because I had to really shape up and, uh, and, and get making money that was comparable to a full time job as quickly as possible. And barring the odd little hiccup, where the occasional bill has been paid a little bit later than it should have been, uh, or I've had to live on reasonably crap food for one month because I couldn't afford to anything slightly better. Barring all of those little things, um, it's gone really, really well. And I'm quite proud of what I've accomplished and what I continue to accomplish with the business. Um, there's there's a lot of other things in my life that I suppose have been good accomplishments as well. Uh Marriage was a was a pretty good accomplishment, I'm not going to lie. Uh, finding somebody that would actually want to spend the rest of their life with me. Um, that's a pretty amazing accomplishment, so thanks Joe for that one as well. Um, but yeah, at the moment, definitely this, this whole thing with the business is probably my biggest accomplishment. So that is the 19 questions, and I kind of answered the 20th missing question within there as well. I will get another video out in a couple of days, as I say, which will kind of be a little bit more not formal as such, but it'll be a little bit more of a kind of, this is my story, this is where I've come from, um, this is my professional background. Not because I want to stand on a soapbox and boast about how great I am or anything like that, but I think when I'm here sort of trying to tell you um, or advise ways you might want to run your reselling business, like I say, I will never, ever say to you that my way is the best way or the right way to do something. But if you want to try my ways, go for it. Um, but I think people that might be thinking, why should I try this person's ways? What does this guy know, etc.? Um, I think it's probably quite important to sort of flesh out my background and let you know a little bit about where I come from. Um, so that'll be a video that I'll do in a couple of days and it'll kind of be a, 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 a formal introduction to the channel as well. Uh, and that'll be something that probably gets uh, uploaded just... Uh, words. Uh, that's something that I'll probably upload at the start of the new year. So there we go, guys. That is everything for today. Uh, if you have any other questions for me, whether they're reselling related, personal related or otherwise, you are very welcome to leave those down below and I will answer them uh, as soon as I can. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do feel free to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, please do feel free to leave a dislike, but don't just thumb and run. Let me know down below what you did and didn't like, and uh, I'll try and tailor any future content to be a little bit more palatable for you. Um, if you do enjoy the channel and you do enjoy the videos, do feel free to hit that subscribe button and uh, give the bell icon in the corner a little tickle there as well, just so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Uh, but otherwise, guys, that's everything for today. Have a great day, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.